We know hundreds of incredible and unusual projects for roads, tunnels, and bridges. However, what Norway has conceived goes beyond any imagination. The country's government has decided to build 1121 kilometers of the underwater road. It sounds like something fantastic, but in fact, it is quite a real project which is planned to be realized in the next few years. More than $40 billion have been allocated from the budget for this purpose. Today, we will tell you about two crazy mega projects of recent years, the new underwater highway in Norway and the new $20 billion Turkish canal. Enjoy watching. Along the western coast of Scandinavia, there are more than 1,000 picturesque fjords, narrow, winding, and deeply cut into the land of sea bays with rocky shores. These locations in Norway are protected by UNESCO and are very popular among the residents of the country and tourists coming here from different parts of our planet. However, all this beauty significantly complicates the lives of local drivers. Due to the specific climate, the weather in Norway is unpredictable. Icy winds, mountain serpentine roads, snow, and ice make transportation within the country incredibly challenging. The new project, an underwater highway, will greatly simplify people's trips to these legendary places. Currently a trip from the southern city of Christians and to the northern Trondheim, covering a distance of over 1,000 kilometers, takes 21 hours. Additionally, those who wish to admire the beauty of Norway's nature have to go through at least seven ferry crossings along the way. To simplify this task, the Norwegian government has decided to construct a unique underwater tunnel through which cars will be able to overcome the distance of 1,000 kilometers in record time. The highway is being built on a stone foundation in the subsoil of the sea at a depth of 392 meters. The ambitious infrastructure project also includes the development of floating tunnels constructed at a depth of 30 meters underwater. If the plan is successful, Norway will be able to win the global race against countries like China, South Korea, Korea, and Italy, which are only in the process of developing similar projects. Let's explore the technologies that will make this new wonder possible. As we mentioned before, the project involves the development and construction of underwater floating tunnels, which should be located in the fjords at a depth of about 30 meters. According to the developer's plan, such a tunnel should consist of two concrete tubes, one for each direction of traffic, securely anchored with strong cables. These cables are intended to be attached either to the fjord's floor or to massive pontoons floating on the surface. These pontoons will be spaced at a considerable distance from each other, avoiding interference with maritime traffic. The idea is that the waves and currents at a depth of 30 meters are not as powerful as on the surface. In fact, they are almost non-existent and cannot impact the speed of vehicles' movement. Additionally, floating tunnels minimize the impact of the highway on the landscape. Most of its infrastructure remains submerged and out of sight, unlike a bridge, which does not create noise during travel. The greatest risks of using floating tunnels are explosions, fires and overloads. Comprehensive tests are needed on models, using explosives to study the behavior of the tubular concrete structures when subjected to internal explosive loads. It is essential to simulate scenarios, such as what would happen to the tunnel structure if a truck with hazardous cargo explodes inside it. Developers believe that the constant water pressure surrounding the floating tunnel will compensate for the energy of the explosion and the concrete tube will not be destroyed. However, this needs to be verified. They are also considering the impact of a collision with a submarine on the tunnel. Norwegian experts are consulting with experts from around the world, examining all possible accident and failure scenarios. But the possibility of something going wrong still exists. The first stage of construction started in December 2017. The new route will not only pass underwater, in some sections, small bridges will be built and existing road sections will be improved to save costs. If the tests are successful and the active phase of the project is launched, its implementation could be completed by 2035. By the way, this project also includes the world's deepest and longest rock tunnel drilled through the seabed. Its depth is expected to be 392 meters, and its length is 27 kilometers. The novelty of this infrastructure is also capable of turning submerged tunnels into a new tourist attraction. Norway will be the first, but certainly not the last country to use underwater roads. Italy and China are already developing similar concepts, while the old road will remain for those who are in no hurry and want to admire the fabulous beauty of Norwegian nature. Istanbul is one of the largest cities in the world. Located on two continents, Europe and Asia, it is home to over 15 million people, making it the seventh largest city in Asia and the largest city in Europe. It is also one of the most renowned cities ever built by humanity. It served as the capital for three historical empires, the Romans, Byzantines, and Ottomans. 
Today, almost one out of five Turkish citizens live in Istanbul. In modern times, Turkey plans to turn Istanbul into an island by constructing another canal along the Bosphorus. Turkey believes that this will reduce congestion in the bay, accelerate international trade, divert dangerous cargoes away from the city, and generate revenue for the government through ship passages. Since 1936, civilian ships have been passing through the Bosphorus free of charge. One of the reasons why Istanbul is an influential city is its strategic location. It is situated in close proximity to the Bosphorus, a narrow waterway that separates Europe from Asia and connects the Black Sea to the Asian and Mediterranean seas. Due to its geography, this is the only route through which countries like Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, and Georgia can access the Mediterranean Sea by water. The Bosphorus is also important for many other nations. The Danube, the second longest river in Europe, flows for thousands of kilometers through important European cities such as Vienna, Bratislava, Budapest, and Belgrade. Since 1992, it also connects with the Rhine River and the port of Rotterdam, Europe's largest seaport and trading hub. Cargo ships bound for Rotterdam almost always pass through the Suez Canal, and many of them frequently navigate through the Bosphorus as well. The Montreux Convention of 1936 guaranteed the free passage through the Bosphorus of all civilian and commercial vessels in both peacetime and wartime. It also prohibited Turkey from ever levying any duties or fees for this passage. The convention stipulated that no more than nine foreign military vessels with a total tonnage of 15,000 tons could pass through the Bosphorus at any given time. At the time, this was a favorable solution for Turkey as it essentially guaranteed their neutrality during World War II. However, in the decades following the end of World War II, numerous disputes arose over the status of the treaty. Immediately after the end of the war, the Soviet Union demanded joint control with Turkey over the Bosphorus and permanent Soviet military presence in the Strait. Turkey rejected these demands. However, they could not withstand the pressure from the Soviet Union alone for long, leading them to join NATO in 1952. This further angered the Soviet Union as the Strait was now effectively in the hands of their Cold War adversaries. However, the United States is also dissatisfied with such rules. The convention does not allow them to transit certain categories of military vessels through the Bosphorus. The agreement continues to hinder the expansion of U.S. military power in the region. In 1994, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea came into force, which largely determines the rights and obligations of a country in the world ocean. Almost every country in the world has signed this agreement, with the exception of Turkey and the United States in particular. Although the treaty theoretically and the Montreux Convention, but Turkey refused to sign it as it would also mean conceding almost all of the Aegean Sea to Greece's territorial waters. Due to these reasons, as an alternative to the Bosporus, Turkey plans to construct an artificial canal near the existing one. The technical restrictions of the Montreux Convention apply only to the Bosporus Strait itself. In 2011, the idea of building the canal was proposed by then Prime Minister Erdogan. Turkish authorities claim that by building the artificial canal right next to the current strait and effectively turning Istanbul into an island, they will be able to impose fees for passage through the canal. In the future, this will also enable NATO aircraft carriers and submarines to enter the Black Sea. Turkey began the mega-project Istanbul Canal in March 2021. It is expected to be located 30 kilometers west of the Bosphorus on the European side of Turkey and will have a length of 45 kilometers. The project was initially planned to be completed in 2023, but was later postponed to 2027. Ships arriving at the Bosphorus often have to queue and wait an average of 14 hours just to pass through the strait. Sometimes they have to wait for days, especially when there is heavy traffic. The new canal is intended to quickly handle a significant portion of this traffic. Turkey claims that it will be able to accommodate up to 160 vessels crossing the canal in a single day. The canal would also help redirect many hazardous cargoes that currently pass through the Bosphorus, right in close proximity to the center of Istanbul, where 15 million people reside. Dangerous cargoes, such as ammunition, oils, and fertilizers pass by residential areas. Turkey believes that it is better to divert all this dangerous cargo westward through the new canal away from the city center. Turkey aims to actively develop the shores of the new canal by building new real estate there. It is expected that the canal will also streamline logistics to the recently built Istanbul airport. This project was intended to be fully completed by the mid-2020s. According to Turkey's plans, the airport will then become the world's largest capable of accommodating 200 million passengers annually. Turkey anticipates that the construction of the Istanbul Canal will cost around $15 billion. With tolls and fees for passage through the canal, the country expects to generate up to $8 billion per year, 30% more than Egypt's revenues from ship passages through the Suez Canal.
Write in the comments which of these two mega projects impressed you the most. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Caro Show channel. Also, check out our previous videos. See you later.